Hello everyone. Welcome back to the asynchronous programming in the .NET. So in the previous video where we discuss about the all the programming model pattern in the .NET which are the available like APM, EPM and the TAP. So that we have discussed in the previous video. So in this video we will discuss one of the pattern that is the asynchronous programming model pattern in .NET and it is basically called the APM and it was introduced in the .NET framework 1.1 and basically like through this one we used to do the asynchronous programming generally and this APM model or the pattern has two type of the set of methods and one is like the method which start from the begin keyword and there is another method that is called the end keyword basically start from the end keyword so you can see begin method name and end method name and the return type of this method is basically i async result so an uh, asynchronous operation that uses the i async result design pattern it is implemented as two method name begin so as i explained like begin operation name and end operation name that begin and end the asynchronous operation operation name respectively so basically as i explained like this apm is basically uh, like uh, based on the two type of the method sets and one is like the method which start from the begin and the end now for an example like in the previous video where we were doing like we were reading the data from a file and then we were printing that uh, like what is the length of that file and we were printing that one so that if we want to read using the apm so for an example the file stream class provide the two method that is the begin read and end read so basically this is provided by the dotnet framework itself and using this apm you can see like this read is the method and it is starting from the begin and the end so through that one what it do it read the file into the bytes using the asynchronous way so let's understand how we can implement this apm in our dotnet so this is the previous example where we have seen like we created a one uh, count character method and in this what we are doing using the stream reader we are reading the file and based on that what we are doing we are taking the count and like the return type of it is integer and based on that what we are doing we are taking and then printing so now when we are doing this operation what actually we were getting the problem since this operation is happening with the single thread and like at point of that time we were not able to move this file from here to there or we can't even minimize this also and you can see like when i click on this read file you can see like i can't move this file from here to there like i'm not able to move it but once it read the data i can move it so for an example like again if i will click i am not able to move this file even i can't maximize it but once it read the data i can maximize and minimize so that was the problem we were having with the synchronous way now what we will do we will make some changes to this method to make it as the asynchronous so let's make those changes so basically what we will do we will use the file stream so since this file stream contain two method and that is the begin read and the end read so here you can see first of all the file stream uh, like constructor accepts some methods uh, sorry the variables and that is the like first is the data like what is the url of that one and then file mode so couple of the needed things it is uh, required here and the file option we have given as the asynchronous and then like since we have to read the large amount of the data so we have um, taken a well local variable that is the byte type byte array and we have given the length of that one now we are using the begin read and that is the basically the asynchronous method for the apm and the return type of this one you can see i async result so we are taking into a one local variable and we are reading and the first variable of it takes like the data so this we have given and then it take the basically like what we are going to assign and this is basically a offset so that we have assigned the zero and then it take the length and then it take the callback method 
and that stream type so that we have given as the null and null and then what we are doing while it is reading we have uh, like uh, given like for slip for the five second and then we are calling the end read method you can see like this operation is happening between the begin read and the end read and this end read take the basically i async result type and then what we are doing that file stream we are closing so this way we are reading the data so let's make these changes in our uh, like code and let's call it so same we ha i have given here and you can see like first i'm reading the data and then i'm assigning to the value and same i'm doing with the begin read and end read now this data i will read into the like i will call here so what i will do here i will remove this count character and i will copy the read file so let's make the read file and here i have taken one static variable and in this static variable i am assigning that count value so through that one i am printing this and here i am making as a asynchronous programming so after making these changes let's run this application so when you will run this application now we can see like it is moving but when i click on this read file we can see still we are not able to make uh, like any changes to this one and once it printed the data then only we can move this file and even you can see this again means what we can say like still this process is not working in the asynchronous way so in your file if you want to make it as a asynchronous so basically when we work with the begin read and the end read what it do it doesn't create another thread it work with the same thread and it block the screen as the synchronous way so if you want to uh, like unblock this one or you want to make a another thread for this one then we have the two approaches in the apm and one is the checking with the is completed and basically like what we have to do that is the pole of operation completion status by checking is completed property periodically and calling end operation name so that we will see in a bit and the process which we use that is the async callback so here if you will see like so in this if in the begin read we can see it like here we have assigned the null value basically it take the async callback method so what it is like use an async callback delegate to specify a method to be invoked when the operation is completed for an example that illustrate this technique see using a async callback delegate to end an asynchronous operation so basically for making a new thread or doing a asynchronous operation we use the async callback so use an async callback delegate to process the result of the asynchronous operation in separate thread so what basically it do it create a separate thread for us and in that manner like if there will be two threads we can do the multiple operation so async callback is basically a delegate type which returns the void and accept a method of the same signature and delegate uh, represent a callback method that is called when the asynchronous operation completed so that we will see in a week in a bit the callback method taken i async result parameter so that also we will see if you want to see or you want to get a more knowledge on this apm then you can go this link also and you can see like more about this apm like how it works so in the modern time like generally most of the people use the tap and that is the task asynchronous programming so this uh, like uh, event programming and the asynchronous programming most of the company don't use now so if you want to get more knowledge on it you can go to the this link you can see this link in the description section as well now for making this async callback so what changes we have to do so first like let's see what changes we have to do in the read file so basically in this read file what changes we have to do so this read file first of all we have to pass i async result so this we have to pass it and then we have to create an object of the stream type and this will be the async state type and here we will see like uh, if it is completed then like 
what we are saying if it is not completed in the sense the process is still going on then we will print like processing file please wait otherwise what we will do if it is completed then we will say thread dot slip five second and then we are calling the end read and from here whatever the count is coming we are printing to the label two and how we will call like now instead of call uh, calling that uh, reader file directly into the read file what we will do on the button click first we will create an object of that file stream and then we will pass using the async callback so let's implement it then we will understand better on this one so let's go to the visual studio and start making some changes so let's understand first of all about our method that is the read file so here like we are passing a sync result that is the first thing that we have to do to make it asynchronous and then we have taken an object of the stream type and here we are checking like if this particular file if it is still working then we are making like this now here you can see like what i am doing i am invoking the label and the reason is is basically this label one is in the different thread like what we are doing generally now using this async result means using the async callback we are creating a new thread but this label one is in the different thread so to manage it with this new thread what we have to do we have to invoke this thread and we have to use it here method invoker and then through this delegate we have to assign this new value so you will understand it in a bit so before that what we are doing first we are creating this stream object and then what we are doing like from here we are passing this ar and then we are reading this file and then whatever the count is there we are taking to this one now how we are calling so first it is same like first we are reading the file stream and then we are taking the data length since we are having the huge uh, amount of the data means the length is big that's why we have uh, assigned in this array this much length and then using this fh.begin rate here you can see i am first passing the data and that is the byte of the array and then length and this is offset that we have given zero now here we are calling a sync callback so this async callback like here you can see like it is in delegate so if you will go to the definition of this one you can see it is the delegate and it is the delegate is basically void return type and it take i async result ar so it take in this way so same signature method we have to pass in this one so read is the same signature like the return type is void and accept i async result that's why we have to pass this i async result type in this and then what we are doing we are passing the stream file and here you can see like after the user callback we are passing the state object and then based on that we are doing so as of now when you will read this like when you will run this application and now currently i can move it now if i will read this file and you can see i can move it i can maximize it even and after that it is printing the data see here we can do two operations so basically like initially when i click on this one it is saying like the count is zero like at a time multiple uh, threads are going on since i didn't reset it that's why like it is giving in this way so what i will do i'll run it again and like currently it is label one so when i will click on this one it the count value is zero since we have taken here so zero and once it will update after this operation it will update the value and you can see currently it is zero and even i can do any operation to this one and it is updated to this so this is the way like using the async callback what we can do we can perform the operation now for an example what if i copy it directly and i comment this line so now we will see a runtime error here so when i will run this application and after five seconds and the reading the file we will get in runtime error here and what it will say like cross thread exception we will get and you can see like cross thread operation not valid since label one is in the different thread and here call like this one uh, async callback is the different thread that's why what we have to do instead of calling 
it like this what we have to do we have to invoke that method using the method invoker and through that we have to assign the value so this is the way is basically apm works in the dot net like generally it is depend on the two things one is the end and that method name and begin and the method name so you can see these type of the methods in the like in many places like even if you are going to read the binary operation so there also you can see like so here in the invoke if you will go into the definition of this one and here if it will going to contain any method like this even this will also get it so currently these are the event type so here let's see it is contain or not so and and we can see the this is the end invoke and any other method it is not having so it is not ha having any apm related things but there are the couple of the other things which it contain so this is the ba uh, way basically we implement the apm so that's it for this video if you have any question and doubt please comment thank you